Diego, we're very fortunate. We're one of the largest killer whale facilities in the entire world. Our facility is made up of five pools. They're connected and joined through gates and channels, which are kind of like doorways and hallways. And all of our whales are trained to swim through it. And this is a useful tool throughout the day because we can change up where the whales are. So we actually are home to 10 killer whales. We have five males and five females, and we're constantly changing up their social structure. So that means who are they with? How long are they there? How many pools do they have? How many whales? How many trainers? What kind of sessions are they doing? All sorts of different things. So right now we have it pretty fun. Uh, we actually have this pool popped to another pool. So we have four whales that are in two pools, and the other six are in the other three pools. So again, we can change it up. Um, earlier today, there was a larger group, and we were already started moving whales around today. So this is changes up their day. It also makes it fun. Also, that way they get to see all of their buddies all throughout the day. So it's a, a cool tool to use. So in the interaction, I believe we're going to be working with four of our, our larger whales. Um, we're going to have two females and two males. So there are two whales swimming in the pool right now. I believe the other two are in the other pool. So we have Shuka and Keith swimming deep right now. I will point them out when they come up and take a breath. Shuka is the female of this group, and uh, Keith is the male. Shuka and Keith are actually just two weeks apart, so they're both 24 years old. They're going to be 25 next year, so that's pretty exciting. Um, Shuka is a mature female. She's about 5,300 pounds, and Keith is a mature male, and he is about 8,500 pounds. So definitely a size difference between this female and male. The other two whales in the pool, again, we'll have another female joining us and another male. Corky is our oldest whale here in SeaWorld San Diego. She's 53 years old. And she's hanging out with her best friend, Ikaika, who actually just turned 15 years old. So we've got a nice variety here. We've got a teenager, two 20-year-olds, and a 50-year-old. Uh, Corky, at 53 years old, you would never guess how old she is because she is extremely athletic. Uh, she's incredible to watch. She's always moving. She's on, always on the go. She's probably our second most athletic, our first most athletic break is one of the Shuka right down there. She takes my breath away on a daily basis with her ability to just soar out of the water. It's incredible. Keith is our uh, loving teddy bear. He's a big, big gentle giant. Uh, he really enjoys resting, napping, blowing bubbles, and getting back rubs. Uh, so uh, his favorite thing in the world is just to hang out with his trainers and just get a whole back rub. Um, yeah, it's like a big old puppy dog. So very different personalities. Ikaika, the 15-year-old, is our goofball. Uh, he makes me laugh on a daily basis. The way I kind of describe him is uh, kind of a puppy that's in that awkward gang of phase where they love everything, everything's fun, but they kind of trip over themselves. Uh, that's him. Uh, he just adds flair to every single behavior, uh, and there's not a single game or toy or sort of reinforcements such as ice or snow or jello that that whale does not like. He finds everything and anything fun. So he's just a happy-go-lucky guy. So as we start interacting with the whales, you're gonna see their different personalities throughout the interaction. The way you can see that is some of the behaviors that they do, what the trainers are using to reward them, how the trainers are interacting with them. Again, Keith is a little bit more of a, a guy that just likes to chill out. Uh, where Corky is more of a go, so her trainer might be running around with her while Keith's just getting a nice little peck rub. So very fun to dine with orcas because you get a little bit behind the scenes. You're going to see behaviors with the whales. You're also going to get to see a little bit more of their personalities and a little bit more how we work with them, the different sessions we do, which include learning. They learn every single day. They are exercised every day. It's very important for us to stay healthy and exercise the same with our whales. Um, we do husbandry behaviors which are behaviors that actually allow the whales to participate in their own health care, such as body exams, eye exams, we can get blood samples from our whales, we weigh them once a week. All of these different things to make sure that everyone is healthy, we can be very proactive in their health care. Uh, they can also do play sessions and then relate sessions where we're just hanging out and having a wonderful time with our whale. We're not asking them to do anything except enjoy our company as we enjoy their company. So it appears that we are going to go ahead and get started. So Jen here is working with Keith. Oh, and then Michelle stepped down to Shuka. And then we asked Porky and I could to join us. And then what we're doing right now is something I talked about earlier. We're going to do a separation. So we're changing up the social structure of our whales. There's Porky right there. She just popped up. And Ikaika is bringing up the rear. So again, he here is a mature male at 24 years old. Corky is a mature female at 53. Shuka is a mature female at 24 as well. And Ikaika is a juvenile male at 15. So he has quite a bit of growing left to do. He is already a very, very large whale, however. He 
is 7,500 pounds. So we expect him to be very, very large one day, even larger than he here, who's right around 8,500 pounds. So what we did is we just asked Shuka to leave. So now we have Pete, Ike, and Corky in the pool. And we're going to try to shut a gate. And we're going to uh, have her hang out with some other whales while we interact with these three. So we'll see if it's successful. It's not always successful, and that's okay. Uh, our training philosophy here at SeaWorld is something called positive reinforcement. So what we do is we bring a lot of attention to things that we enjoy, and we simply just ignore something that we don't want. Uh, a lot of times it's simply just a three-second pause. And you might not even know that, uh, not being a trainer. It looks like nothing, and all we're looking for is a nice, calm response from our whales. So if they make a mistake, if they're incorrect, if they choose not to do something, everything is their choice. We just look for a nice, calm behavior, and we really bring a lot of attention into that. So even when they fail, they can still get rewarded with fish, ice, snow, jello, toys, back rubs, belly rubs, everything. A lot of times they get rewarded very heavily for failure because of the calm response, and that's what we're looking for. So here comes Keith. He's going to pop up right here and get a good look at everybody over there. You can go ahead and wave at him. And he's singing. That's very nice. All right, so because we were successful with that gate, what we're going to do is we're going to step away from the pool a little bit and talk a little bit more about these three while the trainers go move Shuka into another pool with the other whales. So, again, changing up that social dynamic, making it very different and fun for everyone all throughout the day. So as these three whales are swimming around, you're going to notice, and yes, there's different sizes. Corky is 8,600 pounds. Again, um, Keith, 8,500. Ikeka, 7,400. But you're also going to notice something pretty prominent on their back. That is called their dorsal fin. Now, their dorsal fin comes in all shapes and sizes. And no two dorsal fins are the same. So they're just like our fingerprints. Very unique to that whale. So that is one of the ways when you first start working with the whales, or if you're out um, watching wild whales, you can look at dorsal fins and figure out who is who and which individual is which individual. Now we have a, a little bit of variety here. We have two curvatures, and we have a super straight one. Now obviously it has nothing to do with age, because Corky is 53, and hers is perfectly straight. These two two happen to be both males, but it does not have to be a male trait. It can be a male and female trait. And what happens to the dorsal fin is there is no bone or muscle in the dorsal fin. Male dorsal fins can get up to six feet tall. That is a very tall structure without any bone or muscle. So sometimes over time, just like gravity affects everything, it affects me, it affects you, it affects everything, gravity can affect the dorsal fin. Now because that dorsal fin has no bone or muscle, what it is made up of is a dense connective tissue. Now sometimes over time that tissue will soften or weaken, and that makes it easier for gravity to pull it over. So one of the things that we found, curvature can happen because of the lifestyle of the whale. I mentioned earlier, Keith loves to rest. He loves to nap. He loves to hang out at the surface. So his dorsal fin is exposed to the beautiful San Diego sun. Well, when the sun touches things, it warms things, right? When things get warm, they're easier to move. Then it's easier for gravity to take them over. Corky is a very active whale. She is always swimming, always moving. She very rarely rests. So her dorsal fin is not exposed to the elements as much, which is probably part of the reason why hers is still straight. So it does not hurt the whale at all. It just looks a little different. Of the 10 whales we have here, we have three with curvature. The other seven do not have curvature. So again, it does not happen to all whales, but it can happen to some whales. It does not hurt them. It just looks a little different. So that is the reason why Corky's is straight and keep it nice are curved. Another commonly asked question we get is, how in the world do you train a killer whip? Well, I mentioned a little bit about our positive reinforcement, bringing a lot of attention to things that we enjoy. But we actually utilize a couple tools as well. And the first one is around my neck. It sounds like this. Now, that is simply just a dog whistle. In training terms, it's called a bridge. And it's all set to the same frequency. So all of our whistles here at SeaWorld San Diego are the same. And the whales understand that that means good job. So every time they hear this whistle, they know they've done something correctly, and they're going to head on back to their trainer, and they're going to get something they enjoy. Now, of course, they enjoy fish. Everyone's eating right now because we need food to survive as well. But there are a variety of other things. Toys, ice jello, as I mentioned, uh, different social groups, different sessions, uh, back rubs, belly rubs, warm water pours, cold water pours, all sorts of fun different things that we can reward the whale with. Now, we also utilize a tool called a target pole. I have a little one over here. 
Now, a target pull is simply just a buoy on the end of a stick. And what we do is we ask the whales, when they're first starting to learn what a target pull is, to very gently touch the front of their rostrum or the front of their face to the buoy. Now, every time they do that, we blow our whistle and we give them something they enjoy. Pretty soon, it is really fun to touch this because something fun always happens after they do it. So those are the basic steps. Now from there, we can start training behaviors because they understand the concept of staying on the target pole. So if I want to teach you how to here, it's just swimming by, a head shake yes. I'm going to ask him to place his face right here, and he knows to stay on the bead until I blow my whistle. So I can move it up, and I can move it down, and I can tell him, great job. And then maybe next time I'll do a couple more, up, down, up, down. Then I tell him, good job. Now the way that we communicate with the whales is through sounds and body language, kind of like a sign language. Each behavior has its own signal, whether it's mimicking our body or a hand signal. Well, the head shake yes is simply us just doing our head head shake yes. So what I'll do is after he's figured out a couple times of following this, I will then add in my signal. So I pair the two together. So as I move the buoy, I move my head. Then, eventually, I can take this away, and I can just move my head, and I kike up, will move his bent head to mimic me, and now he's doing a head shake yes. So it's pretty simple to train a head shake yes. I would say anywhere between a uh, couple days, maybe a couple weeks. Uh, this is a pretty easy behavior uh, to figure out. It doesn't take a lot of athleticism. It's just moving your head up and down. Now, some of the more uh, high-energy behaviors, like a front flip, same basic steps. You're going to ask them to follow the target in the water, get it higher and higher, get larger and longer target pulls, and then pretty soon you have your whale doing a front flip. Now, a front flip can take a little bit longer based on the whale's athleticism. Um, so anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months to even a couple years to learn behavior sometimes. But just like you and I, they all learn differently. Uh, they all have different learning curves. So again, one of the best parts about being a trainer is getting to know each individual whale, what they like, what they don't like, what their pet personalities are, and how they learn. All right, so it looks like we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, if you are in the buffet line, head on out. And here comes Courtney to show off that amazing athleticism I mentioned earlier. On the far side of the pool, here she comes. Woo! I'm going to let you all in a little secret. The whales can see you, and they can hear you. So if you see anything you enjoy, let them know. Applaud, who holler, whistle, scream. Uh, you will help reward them and let them know that you're really enjoying watching them do their thing. Now, you may have just heard that little sound that kind of sounded like a telephone ring. Uh, that is a tone coming from the tone box, which is a sound that tells the whales great job. So it's the same exact thing as my whistle. It lets them know you've done exactly what I've asked. Here's a Kaika! Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Look how handsome he is. Oh, he likes it. So I mentioned some of those toys earlier. Jen is playing with a toy with Keats. And Michelle has a different toy with Quirky. Across the pool, you might that blue ball that is a different toy. So we're constantly thinking of different and fun toys for our whales. Uh, we were very nice, uh, fortunate. Some firemen actually donated us some fire hose. So that's the toy that uh, Quirky's playing with. They seem to really, really enjoy it. We have fire hoses that sink, that float, that are attached to other toys. Um, and all of the whales seem to really think that that is really fun. Now Jen has pulled out another toy. <laughs> 
So all throughout the day, they get all sorts of sessions, and it looks like this session today for all of you is going to be more of a, a fun play session, where they don't really have to do a ton of behavior, but they're just really having a good time playing with their toys, playing with their trainers, throwing some behavior in there, here and there. All right, splash morning, here comes Corky. Woo! Beautiful girl. Applause, applause, anyone? Yes.
athleticism. This time her belly is going to be facing the sky.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, it's that time for our interaction to come to an end. On behalf of myself, the other trainers, you're absolutely amazing. I'm Stephanie. And of course, our three superstars, Corky, Keith, and Ikeika. I think that Ikeika is going to give you all a great big wave goodbye, killer whale style. Very nice. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We had a wonderful time. I hope that you did as well. We've got